Hello everyone and welcome back to another video on Art of War 3 tutorial series. In this video we will be looking at the units of the Crown Federation, what their weaknesses and strong sides are and how you should use them and what weapons they use in the general overview. Uh, for starters, uh, let's look at the infantry. Our most basic infantry in the game is our assault. This is the most basic unit. It costs for the credits to make in the battle. Just long command points. It is an assault rifle and an anti-personnel grenade. It is best used against enemy infantry and in rush rushes. If you want to rush the enemy, you can just uh, spam a lot of assaults and some fortresses, preferably, and just attack the enemy as quickly as you can. Of course, these weapons are not really good against higher types of armors so I wouldn't trust on them to fight against enemy vehicles or helicopters or ships too as well that's pretty much it actually and yes you should keep in mind that the assault is actually better than the rifleman of the resistance so you, you can actually use it against the resistance if they are going for riflemen, they will not be the, of course, the perfect choice for it when you have fire assault or fortress. But still, if you want to make assaults, you can count on them to kill any riflemen they will see. Of course, it can also depend on the upgrades you get. So don't forget to do this if you like using the assault. Next infantry is heavy assault. Now, as you can see, it has a rocket launcher. It is best used against enemy vehicles. It's, it can also protect your coastline from ships, and they have good damage against buildings as well. Uh, they cost a little bit more than assault, just five credits more. Uh, they move slower, as you can see in here. They have a good amount of HP, a good armor, and the rocket launcher is pretty good actually against armored units. It has a pretty good damage but I would advise you to be careful using it because if the enemy is making a bunch of armadillos and trying to attack you they will probably keep the armadillos moving around so the rockets of the vessel uh, can miss the armadillos so be sure to get the upgrades and to improve the speed of the rockets because it can be really good to get that you don't want your assaults to miss at all but if the enemy vehicles are just standing there they are just sitting ducks for the assault it will not be a problem at all and unlike the grenadier the rocket launcher can actually attack at helicopters so if you see your enemy making a bunch of dragonflies or cyclones if you are fighting against another confederation player you can just do a lot of assaults and they will take care of it. But they will move slower than the helicopters, so you have to keep that in mind. The assault units are much slower. The concentration units will move much slower than the resistance units, so you have to keep that in mind. Next up is fire assault. It's our special assault infantry. It's as it says in here, it's most effective against the infantry. It has a flamethrower. It has a really good damage against armor one, which is equipped by infantry, of course. And when it's uh, attacking at the enemy, actually, it will not just attack at one infantry. It will damage a lot of infantry. The guys behind of the the guy that you select to attack, actually, so. Uh, damage might not seem that good for a flamethrower, but it actually is. It's good. But I personally don't use it. I don't choose to use it. I just use fortress because I don't like to upgrade the barracks to level 3 just to get fire assault. And unlike the sniper, actually, the fire assault will take only one command point. But that's good so you can make a lot more of them if you are going for that kind of strategy. 
And as you can see here, actually, the fire assault has a jetpack. And you can actually get some upgrades for it. Yeah, it's this one. Jump engine. And when it gets closer to the enemy, it will just start the jetpack and fly next to it. It will get... It actually has a slower speed while moving. But using the jetpack, it will move much high, much higher speed. And it's... Actually, some units will not be able to attack it while it's using the jetpack. So it's good uh, to get closer to the enemy as the plane thrower has a low range. Uh, next up on the vehicles, we have our fortress. Uh, it says infantry support vehicle. It has a lot of HP, it has a lot of armor, and it's type 3, as you can see. It takes 3 command points, 140 credits. It has a turret and the flamethrower, and it's better than the flamethrower of fire assault, actually. And I did upgrade it, of course. That's actually one of the other reasons. I think fortress are really good units in the early, in the early stages of the game. It's very durable. There's a lot of HP, good armor. It moves, it doesn't move really fast. It's heavy, but it will be really good against enemy infantry. It will really get, it will, you can kill like 10, 15 guys with one fortress, so it can be really efficient. And against Grenadiers too, actually, they are anti vehicle units. But if you can make some fortresses and perhaps use a attack boost increase their attack and more importantly their movement speed they can be really deadly against them too and considering they are anti-tank units the fortress can actually take care of them as well there are a lot of different upgrades for it and your enemy might put down some landmines with using its armadillos and if you suspect that, you can actually send a fortress using the special mode of it, uh, selecting the mode and pointing it somewhere, and it will actually check for mines while moving. And if you see any mine, it will remove it. So that's pretty useful, and you don't want to step on any landmine. Trust me, because landmines are cheap to put down, and they cause a lot of damage. So. It will really be in the favor of the resistance. It, they are really cost effective. So you you want you really want to get rid of those mines. You can use fortress for it, but keep in mind that fortress will move slower while searching for mines, even slower than its regular speed. So don't forget that. Next is our hammer, light assault tank. Uh, it has good HP for a tank, decent. It has good armor, but it's armor type 2. Unlike Fortress, which has armor type 3. Hammer has higher movement speed. Uh, it costs a little bit less, time credits less than Fortress. Uh, 2 command points. I think it's a good unit. Uh, and you will probably make a lot of hammers in your battles when you start out. Because in the early stages of the game, you will, you probably will not see a lot of uh, tier three units uh, because they cost cost a lot of credits to make, and you have to get a lot of upgrades. So in earlier levels, I think it can be better if you just spam a lot of uh, low tier units instead of making one or two tier three units. So that's quantity over quality there, if you can pull it off. Because uh, you can get really defenseless if you can't, if you are just trying to defend your base with one of those instead of making, I don't know, 8 or 10 hammers, perhaps. Uh, it has a 90mm anti armor gun, it has a good damage. I, I think it's actually better than the armadillo, in my opinion. But unlike the armadillo, uh, hammer cannot shoot at uh, helicopters. I think that's the main weakness of the hammer. It is weak against helicopters. So you have to keep that in mind and make some anti-aircraft units. Perhaps some typhoons or 
some heavy assaults in case the enemy will come with some helicopters. Uh, like I said, it has good speed, a good weapon, decent range. Uh, a good tactic for using the hammers is that uh, you should keep them moving, like armadillos. If you keep them moving, the enemy will have harder time hitting them, hitting the hammers. Of course, you will have uh, less accuracy as well. But the thing about hammer is that its accuracy doesn't go lower that much, it's just 3%. So it's really good if you can keep the hammers moving, because the hull can move and shoot even behind, so it's not like a tank destroyer or something, it can shoot while it moves. Next up is our Zeus heavy assault tank. Now this is the tankiest tank that you will see in the game it has a lot of hp a lot of armor uh, it costs four command points and 240 credits to make and you need a level 3 assault vehicle factory to create it and for assault vehicle factory level 3 you need a headquarters of level 3 so keep that in mind it can actually be pretty expensive upgrade to get in the earlier levels of the game because you will spend 400 credits for level 2 and 800 more for level 3 headquarters and then you will have to upgrade your assault vehicle factory as well so like I said before if you are in, in the lower levels I will stick to Fortress and Hammer instead of Zeus until you can get uh, more resource production in the battle now looking at the weapons it has an 125mm thermoelectric gun and an automatic missile launcher. So unlike Camel, Zeus can actually shoot at the aircraft. Well, not the aircraft, just helicopters actually. It used to be able to shoot at uh, fighters as well, but it was removed for balancing reasons. Now the thermoelectric gun is a beast, as you can see here. It has a lot of damage against Armor 3 and Armor 2. Uh, it's a lot less damage against Armor 1, against infantry. So you can actually make one or two fortresses if you are suspecting the enemy will go for a infantry is going for make is making a lot of infantry you can make some fortresses to account to go with it. But if you mess enough Zeus, I don't think it will be a problem. Because it has a lot of HP and they can just tank the damage that will come from the enemy infantry. Now while you can see here that the range isn't as good as the Jaguar of the Resistance, the heavy tank of the Resistance. So keep that in mind that the Resistance will put down the Jaguar tanks somewhere, set them up and wait for you to walk in on them. So you have to be careful not to take too heavy damage on themselves and because although it has a lot of HP, they can go down under fire from the Jaguars. Next up is our Typhoon, the anti-aircraft vehicle. It has two modes, March mode and Siege mode. You can see here that in March mode, Sam Launcher will have 7 range and rate of fire of 30. And in Siege mode, fire range increases to 9 and rate of fire doubles to 60. Now, if you scout your enemy's base and saw that he is making fighters or intending to make fighters he has an area factor and he's upgrading it or perhaps you saw an airfield uh, if you have a special vehicle factory just go straight ahead and make some typhoons and perhaps some aircraft defenses as well but eventually you will want to attack the enemy and you can't take the defensive structures with you so you will need to take the typhoons and try to keep them in siege mode whenever you can so they have better stats and they can take down the enemy easier they have a good amount of HP a, a kind of low armor in my taste they cost 150 credits 2 command points and they move kind of slowly as you can see uh, and they are useful against helicopters as well actually you can make them against helicopters as well but unlike the port spin it cannot do anything against the land units so don't just 
don't just make typhoons you have to make something with it so you can repel the attacks from land as well if you have a lot of Zeus so you will not worry about the helicopters actually the missile launcher will take care of it and you will not need any typhoon but for fighters or bombers you will need them next up is torrents multiple launch rocket system now this is actually a kind of a beast <laughs> it has a really good damage as you can see of course it's not as strong as thermoelectric gun well thermoelectric gun has a double of the damage but actually Torrent will fire like 6-7 rockets at a time, so it's really efficient. The rockets, rockets don't have a lot of accuracy as you can see, it's 59. But if you can make like uh, 4 or 5 torrents, they can literally get rid of anything that, will, that the enemy will send at you. They cost 250 credits for command points, they move slowly, you can get a bunch of upgrades for it. HP and armor so they will stand the fire but they should preferably stay on the back of the army and Zeus should, uh, take the damage and Torrent should fire from behind it has 10 range uh, it doesn't have as many range as Mammoth actually the Art Slayer gun it has like 14-15 range the torrent doesn't have that much but it's still good it still outranges the heavy tank of the resistance and pretty much every unit except for Mammoth perhaps some snipers can shoot at torrent without getting hit but it's snipers it will not do much damage against armor type 3 so I would advise you to make like 3-4 of them in your army and they will just spray the enemy with rockets and pretty much kill everything. They are good against infantry too actually. The damage is just 300 but if you can, like I said, make 3, 4, 5 of torrents, you can pretty much kill anything that's coming at you. They do have a long reload time though, be aware of that. Uh, our last vehicle is energy shield, pretty much says what it does in the name actually, it's an energy shield for your units and vehicles it costs 400 credits and 5 command points that's pretty high but it can actually be really useful you do need to upgrade special vehicle factor for level 3 to open it so it can be a big investment but it will pay it off I think if you have enough Zeus and turret and you just place the energy shield in the middle so it can cover everything it will really take down a lot of the damage that's coming at you and a lot of your units will survive and considering that Zeus actually has a lot of HP and armor it will pretty much make the Zeus uh, immortal so if you can get it but if not uh, it may not be that important but if you are gonna go under heavy fire from Mammoth and uh, Jaguar I would advise you to get it and it can actually protect you against fighters and bombers as well but be careful that the enemy doesn't snipe it down with bombers or fighters because once your shield is down the energy shield on the other units will go down as well in a few seconds it's not immediately but they will go down and next up we have our aircraft uh, cyclone the reconnaissance helicopter uh, it looks pretty cool I think uh, it is an avionic machine gun it has decent range and it actually grows higher a lot more. I didn't upgrade it a lot. Got 160 credits, uh, 3 command points. It has a lot of speed so it's really good for scouting the enemy. Seeing what they are up to and where their units are moving. And another use of the cyclone is that it can see enemy infantry in the forest. The ones that are hiding in the forest. And also it can see submarines as well. So it's it can be pretty useful I will if you can if you can uh, afford it get make like one or two so you can scout the enemy or you can just make two or three uh, aerial factory and just go for a cyclone rush which I wouldn't advise but it can be a surprise move for the enemy if the enemy does have any armadillos to 
they will take it then, or any entire aircraft unit. So it can be risky, keep that in mind. And you might have noticed the damage is kinda low, but the rate of fire is very high, so don't worry about that. The next up is Vertex, Light Jet Fighter, Fighter of the Confederation. It looks pretty slick, I think. <laughs> It costs 300 credits, 5 command points, it has a lot of speed, uh, it's much faster than the resistance counterpart actually, than Hawk. It had I think around 400 speed, uh, it, has, it shoots rockets, a guided missile launcher, it doesn't have the cannon or like in the Hawk, but I think the missile launcher of the Vertex is much stronger than Hawk. Uh, it's, it's especially better at taking down buildings and I think you will find it more useful uh, to use against uh, entire defenses, to take down entire defenses it will be much more efficient than how that's why I like the Vertex, it's much better uh, it does have uh, less HP than Hawk I do have I think I have more upgrade on the Vertex than my Hawk, so the HP might be higher because of that. But starting off, uh, the Hawk will have more HP and armor of course it will affect your survivability as well. Uh, just like Hawk, you will need to make an airfield to make Vertex. Your airfield will support up to 4 fighters or bombers. And if you want to make more, you will just have to make another airfield. They will stay here until you give them a command to fly somewhere or attack something. They will attack it and they will keep attacking if there's anything else nearby. And uh, after they are done or out of fuel, they will return to the airfield. And in the airfield they will get refueled, get ammunition and get repaired a little bit if they, are, if they took damage. And that's pretty much for Vertex, if you can get a lot of resource boxes in the start of the game, uh, resource containers, and got a lot of money to upgrade your headquarters and get a bunch of supply centers, you can just rush to the Vertex and make like 3-4 of them and surprise the enemy, because uh, if you can do it fast enough, the enemy might not have any entire aircraft units or defenses. Because players do tend to neglect it sometimes, some players. So you can use that for your advantage if you can surprise the enemy with fighters. But keep in mind that if the enemy uh, comes into your base and sees what you are doing, if he sees that you have an area factory or an airfield, they will know that uh, you are going for an air, either cyclone or uh, fighter, and they will immediately start making entire air units or defenses so keep that in mind and don't let them come into your base with one or two infantry or with a helicopter don't let them know what you are up to and you will be good next up is Thor it's a tactical bomber now in my opinion Thor is much better than uh, its resistance counterpart I think it's a much better unit it costs 400 credits, 6 command points, it's a lot. It moves slower than the fighter, of course. It has a good amount of HP, of course it will go a lot higher as you do the upgrades. I haven't done any upgrade on it. Uh, and it drops air bombs on the place you select. Just lifts up, flies there, drops bombs and comes back. Gets refueled, gets repaired a little bit and waits for the next command. Getting bombers will be a huge investment in battle, in the lower levels especially, and I wouldn't advise going for bomber, really. I think you really need to take control of the game, and know that you, I mean, you really need to control of the game actually. You need to have map control, you, you need to make sure that the enemy won't attack you with a surprise. Because they will be defenseless. It's really hard. To, it will be really hard to defend them. If you have some defensive structures or some units to protect them, then go for it. 
it can be really useful to take down units that are stationary or buildings obviously uh, it will be tricky to attack the moving enemy units if you know where they are going if you know the direction that they will take you can just select uh, somewhere on the path that they are going and if you can time it right uh, it can be really catastrophic for the enemy but it will be really tricky and will take time to master and I chose not to master it yet I go for fighters if I'm going aircraft and I think it's much easier to go for uh, next up we have our naval units this one here is Delta Light Assault Amphibian uh, it has a lot of HP and armor also damage and resistance counterpart the Kaiman the Light 3 combo but it does cost almost twice of Kaiman it was eight, the Kaiman is 80 credits and Delta is 150 so keep that in mind when you are going for a naval battle the enemy can just mass a lot of Kaiman if you have like a lot, a lot less delta, you can get overwhelmed. But in equal numbers, delta will definitely wreck the Kaimans, of course. Uh, you will use delta mainly for uh, naval scouting and getting the resource containers on the water. Uh, and as they are amphibian, actually, they are much more useful than Kaiman. Because after you are done scouting, if you did win the water if you got the control of the water or the enemy just didn't go to water at all you can just sneak up on the coastline and do a surprise attack delta is really good for that and you will actually do that in one of the campaign missions it will teach you how to do that uh, they can be really useful but i wouldn't trust on them to go for in the land battles they should just be used for surprise attacks they will not be efficient to use against armadillos for example you will just need to go with hammers for that uh, next up is viking the heavy destroyer as you can see it has a lot of hp good armor slow movement speed it costs 320 credits it's kind of an hefty price five command points and it's pretty tanky actually it has two weapons 125 mm thermoelectric gun just like in Zeus and the torpedo launcher now, as you can see the thermoelectric gun will shoot three times there are three barrels uh, it has a, it has great damage actually against uh, buildings and the torpedo launcher will do great against uh, enemy ships and the shipyards or the defensive structures on water torpedo platforms uh, they, they can be useful uh, if you can catch the enemy with a surprise uh, to attack its coastline and if you use a naval siege boost it will actually give more range for it so you can take down the buildings from a, a little bit farther further ahead uh, it's a good unit if you like ships I guess uh, a lot of the times though you may not go for it go for it the enemy may not make uh, a lot of buildings near the water so it may not be uh, cost effective to go for it i mean you will have to upgrade your shipyard to level two where is it here which is 320 credits and then you will spend in another 320 credits to make a viking so it can be good in sub scenarios but not always and you have to be aware that it does not have anything to shoot at aircraft so if, if the enemy against has even a single helicopter it cannot shoot at it and it's pretty much the only weakness of the viking but th that's not really a problem and you can just make one or two delta to accompany with it you will solve that problem as well against fighters and bombers though is the real problem you will not have any defense against it and to fight the aircraft with your naval units you will need Poseidon the heavy missile cruiser 
uh, I have no upgrades on this one as well but even the no upgrade version has 7000 health points for the two armor it moves a lot slow slower 380 credits six command points uh, it's basically an like a naval siege unit you'll use it mostly for it has a heavy naval ultra large system just like torrents it has a lot of range so you can take down buildings from further ahead you will not get in native range and it comes with a sam launcher so you will not have to worry about fighters or helicopters uh, against like four or five fighters though it will it can go down yes one or two fighters it will defend itself but against more you will just need to make another Poseidon to defend just like bomber actually Poseidon will need a serious amount of investment to you need, will need to upgrade your shipyard to level 3 and it will not it may not be cost effective in some scenarios same thing actually it does have a lot more range than Viking so you can shoot a lot further into the land you in some maps it can actually be used for defense as well so like I said in some scenarios it will be good you will just have to check you will need depending on how the battle is going you may go for it if you have the money for it so that's pretty much it actually for concentration units let me know in the comments if you have any question or need any hints or tips about certain units just ask me and I will try to answer thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next time